In the heart of the scorching Iraqi desert, Father Lancaster Marin, a weathered Catholic priest, delves into the sands on an archaeological expedition. His seasoned eyes skin the ancient earth, but his soul feels the weight of an impending darkness. Amidst the ruins, he stumbles upon a chilling relic, a grotesque statue, a twisted embodiment of evil, known as Pazuzu. In a fancy area of Washington, D.C., called Georgetown, a famous actress named Chris McNeil, starts noticing weird things. She lives with her daughter Reagan, who is 12 years old, her helper Sharon, and two people who clean the house. Reagan's dad isn't around, and nobody knows why. Strange noises come from the attic, which Chris thinks are from rats. Reagan starts acting oddly, like she's sad and worried. One night, she goes to Chris's bed, saying her bed was shaking. Chris is working on a movie with a director named Burke Dennings. One day, she sees a young priest named Damien Caras watching her. He's also a psychologist and helps people at a nearby church. Chris sees him again when she's walking home from work. Caras is a man who thinks a lot and feels torn inside. He talks to someone in charge about his job as a priest and asks to be moved because he's losing his belief in it. He also has an old mom who lives alone in a poor part of New York City. When he visits her, he sees how lonely she is and feels bad that she has to live in such a bad place. Strange things keep happening in the McNeil house. Reagan tells them she's been playing with a VG board and says she can talk to a ghost by herself. Nearby, a church gets messed up, with someone painting the Virgin Mary statue strangely. Reagan also likes making animals out of clay and painting them. At the same time, Karaz's mom gets sick. Because they don't have much money, she has to go to a really old and bad hospital with other people who have mental problems. Karaz feels terrible when he visits her because she seems to blame him for how bad things are. Later, she dies in that hospital, making Karaz even more sad. Chris throws a big party at her fancy home. Lots of rich people come, including Father Dyer, who's another priest like Karis. Chris thinks Karis is serious and asks Dyer about him. Reagan seems happy during the party, but later, when she's supposed to be sleeping, she comes back dressed for bed and pees on the floor in front of everyone, saying something scary to an astronaut. After everyone leaves, Chris finds Reagan's bed shaking like crazy with Reagan on it. Chris takes Reagan to many doctors to find out what's wrong. They can't figure it out, even after doing painful tests. They think maybe Reagan has a problem in her brain, but they can't find anything on the scans. One time, Reagan seems to have a seizure, and when two doctors come to help, she acts really strange and throws them across the room. She talks in a weird voice, saying creepy things. Eventually, they manage to calm her down. The doctors can't do anything more, so they tell Chris to find a psychiatrist. Then, things get even worse, one night, when Chris comes home, she finds nobody there except Reagan. Reagan is in her room, but it's freezing cold, the window is open wide, and she's not covered up. Chris gets mad at Sharon, thinking she left Reagan alone. But Sharon explains she left Reagan with Burke, who was visiting, while she went to the pharmacy. Later, they find out Burke died outside Chris's house. The next day, a detective named Lieutenant Kinderman talks to Karis. He asks about the church being messed up and if it's linked to Burke's death. Kinderman says Burke's body was found with his head twisted all the way around, and they think someone killed him. When Chris takes Reagan to see a therapist, it doesn't go well. The doctors then reluctantly talk about something else with Chris, they mention the idea of a demon taking over someone's body, and the ritual to get rid of it. They don't like talking about it, but they say it's worked before for people like Reagan. Chris isn't sure about this because she's not really religious. Later, Kinderman comes to see Chris. He asks about what happened the night Burke died, and Chris is nervous. She doesn't want to tell him about Reagan's problem. While Kinderman is there, he notices some small animal figures that Reagan made. They look like the messed up statue in the church. Kinderman leaves, and suddenly there's a lot of noise from Reagan's room. Chris hears a deep voice telling Reagan to do something, and Reagan screaming. When Chris goes to see what's happening, she finds Reagan hurting herself with a cross. When Chris tries to stop her, Reagan becomes really strong and throws things around. Chris sees something terrifying, Reagan's head turns all the way around, and she talks to Chris in Burke's voice. That's when Chris realizes Reagan is the one who killed Burke. Feeling desperate, Chris asks to meet Father Karis. 
When she mentions the idea of exorcism, Karas is surprised. He says exorcisms almost never happen, and he doesn't know anyone who's done one. Chris is upset but convinces him to meet Reagan. When Karis sees Reagan, he's shocked. She's tied to the bed, her face looks strange and has sores on it, and her voice sounds deep and rough. Reagan says she's the devil and does some spooky things, like making a drawer open on its own and speaking different languages. She even sounds like a homeless person Karis met before, but Karis isn't convinced. When Reagan says something about his mom, he asks her a question only his mom would know. Reagan can't answer and throws up all over Karis. Chris cleans Karis's sweater and talks to him about Reagan. Karis still thinks Reagan needs mental help, not an exorcism. Chris begs him to help her get an exorcism, swearing that the thing in her daughter's bed isn't really her. Karis visits Reagan again and records their talk. He pretends tap water is holy water and sprinkles it on Reagan. She acts like she's in pain and talks in a strange way. Later, Karis tells Chris it'll be hard to convince the bishop that Reagan is possessed. The water he used wasn't blessed, so they think Reagan is just mentally ill. Chris tells Karis that Reagan killed Burke. Later, Karis listens to his recordings and realizes Reagan was speaking English backward. While he's figuring this out, Sharon calls him to come to the house. Reagan's unconscious body has words appearing on her stomach, asking for help. Karis didn't want to, but he agreed to try to get someone to help Reagan with her problems. Some doctors thought shocking her might help, but Karis wasn't so sure. The church sent Father Marin to perform a special prayer called an exorcism, and Karis helped him. Marin had done this before, and it was really hard. The bishop said it almost killed him once. When Marin got to Reagan's house, she shouted his name like she knew him. She made weird animal noises too. Marin warned Karis not to talk too much to the demon inside Reagan because it would lie to confuse them. Inside Reagan's room, she started saying bad words right away. Marin and Karis said the special prayer, and then strange things started happening. Reagan floated, moved things with her mind, and had a super long tongue. She said mean things and laughed in an evil way. Then, she started talking like Karis's mom, which upset him a lot. Marin told Karis to leave for a while. When Karis came back, Marin was dead from a heart attack. Reagan laughed, which made Karis angry. He yelled at the demon to come into him instead. It worked, but then Karis wanted to hurt Reagan. So, he stopped himself by jumping out the window. He fell and died just like Burke did before. Luckily, Father Dyer found him and gave him a special blessing, setting Karis free forever. In a short ending part, we see Chris and Reagan getting ready to leave their house in Georgetown. Father Dyer comes to visit them. Chris talks to him alone and says Reagan doesn't remember anything about what happened when she was possessed or the special prayer called an exorcism. Then, Reagan comes and says hi to Father Dyer happily, looking at his white collar. Before they go, she suddenly hugs and kisses Father Dyer. As they drive off, Chris stops the car and gives Father Dyer a religious medal that belonged to Father Karis. After they leave, Father Dyer stands on the steps for a moment before going away.